Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to the barn. This time we are uh, we're doing a little bit of setup work in here, trying to get things put away, established, set up, and make the space a lot more usable. So I'll be working on that today, as well as uh, answering some of the questions that I saw on the last video on the cost of the barn and some other questions that came up uh, in that video. So a little bit of setup work and uh, question answering this time. Actually, hopefully a lot of setup work because I don't want to have to do any more real setup work after today. We also had uh, a heck of a lot of snow. <laughs> so I have to deal with this uh, at some point today. It's still currently snowing, so yeah, we'll, we'll see. We'll, we'll deal with that later. So the biggest thing that I'm waiting on right now uh, is some more racking. So I have some taller racks that are going to take up a lot of the random pallets that are laying around. That's sort of the problem right now is I still don't have enough racking set up to put all my random things on. So there's a lot of things laying around. But uh, to start out today, I want to uh, get my surface removed back towards the wall to free up some space. I had pulled it away from the wall for the electricians to be able to get their ladders up in there and install all of the, uh, the service runs along the side of the building. So before I do that, I have the dust collection pipe, which I'm going to throw up into the trusses and get that set up so it's out of the way, literally up and out of the way, off the machine and out of the pile. And then I can put away all of the fittings that I have here. These are all nine and six inch fittings, which I pulled for uh, this kind of situation here. Uh, my friend Al got a bunch of this uh, NordFab dust collection piping. Uh, several years ago, he doesn't need it, so I bought it off of him when I got the warehouse space, so like two and a half years ago, just in case I ever needed any. So this is all mostly, these are 12, and these small ones here are sixes. So I have a few pallets of those. That's what I'm talking about with like random pallets of things that don't have a home yet because I don't have a rack for them. <laughs> so I want to get, uh, anyway, I want to get these uh, off of the surfacer, up in the air, out of the way, and put away all of the, uh, the random fittings I can and get them palletized so they're ready to go into storage for whenever I need them again. Okay, one done. This is where the, uh, the first drop will be, and I'm waiting on a Y to come in so I can actually make the drop. So at least for now. I don't think you're supposed to use a cheater bar on these, but uh, here we are. No, oh, this is definitely going to break or bend it. Come on, 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 come on,
Oh, that's going to definitely bend. <laughs> Okay, we got four sections of pipe up. <laughs> and I probably should have done this first, but for those of you who are wondering what the general overall layout for this place is going to be. So here is the uh, floor plan from the building plans, and this isn't actually quite right. Let me just fix this real quick. Since we uh, added that bay, this plan was for a 40 by 60, not a 40 by 72. We got post here and post here. Okay, so general kind of layout here, starting on this end with the uh, the overhead door thing, which is actually a 12 by 14, but whatever. Uh, this kind of area here is what I'm calling a garage or like flex space, something like that. That's going to be places to park vehicles, and then vehicles can obviously go outside at any point to make this space usable for you know, whatever task I might need a little bit of floor space for. So for instance, so far we have the telehandler, which kind of is parked uh, right here. That is the, uh, the telehandler kind of footprint. Uh, I'm planning to park get my forklift. will probably park here, something like that. Then the mini skid steer, I'll park here as well. This is where the, the entry door is. This gives me space so I can pull my trailer in if I wanted to you know, unload my trailer. I can do that. I can pull the trailer in. I can unload from this side, or I can pull the telehandler out and unload from this side. So it gives me that flexibility to have vehicles and things down in here. The other kind of more concrete thing is this area down here. So basically from here through three bays, this is chair kit land. So that's going to give me space for all packing materials and storage of inventory kind of in this space here. The biggest thing with the chair kits is they don't really need constant forklift use. So once materials kind of get into this zone, it's all kind of hand-picked until it goes on the boxes. Then the outgoing shipments can go onto a pallet and that pallet can be brought out to the doorway. So I don't really need a whole lot of forklift access. That's one of the things I learned from having my old space is sort of usability of the areas and what things happen in them. Chair kits don't really need that forklift access so it can be tucked away in the corner where I, you know, the forklift doesn't have to be anywhere. That leaves me with kind of all of this space here, and that is for lumber and workbench kits and slabs and things. Uh, those things you need to have forklift access for, so keeping this kind of area open for moving stuff around is how I have this set up. And then of course I have the, the slab flattening table, which we are just about to move here. That's kind of chilling here, kind of out of the way. I have space here to add some other piece of wood machinery thing, and that dust collection line will continue back to the dust collector here on the wall. Right now I just have racking set up over here, and then I'll probably have some more racking back along this back wall, and this will all be kind of flex space where I can move and shuffle material and wood as it's coming in and out of the facility to go in and out, or, or what have you. The other thing, is this corner here where I have the forklift kind of sitting. Uh, this can be reclaimed for, let's call it usable space in the future because a forklift can be parked you know, anywhere in this area because if I'm doing something in this area, I'm gonna use a forklift anyway. So this, this area could become something in the future, but I think just to keep things neat and organized, that's where it's gonna go at least for the time being. Okay, so that's the uh, background info on the layout. I'm gonna get this thing shoved out of the way and we can move on to something far more exciting. Maybe. I doubt it.
So that really opened things up quite a bit, which is, uh, which is nice. I get even more sort of flex space here in the middle. But uh, my next thing is going to be to get the chair kit packing area a little more set up and a little more finalized. I want to try a little bit of a different inventory management system. So previously, I just did stuff like this where I have a pallet with every item for every SKU, which is kind of nice because you have really easy access to all the parts for that chair, but it takes up a ton of floor space. I like this method for my more popular chairs where I have a lot of inventory, but for the less popular ones, I'm going to start putting them onto shelves. So I got a shelving unit to set up, which will allow me to put all of my you know, less popular chairs or chairs that are kind of low in inventory onto those, which would be kind of nice. And then I have my packing tables and some of my packing area and station kind of laid out through here. So my idea for flow is that, uh, well, I, I tried this pallet rack this way. I don't really like it this way. <laughs> so one of the pallet racks I'm picking up is a taller one. This is a 12 foot rack. Um, and what I want to do here is replace this with a 16 foot rack anyway. Um, that will get me up into kind of here-ish in the trusses, but I want to turn it this way now and make it accessible from this side with a forklift. I can get at it from here, but it's a little tight and it's kind of annoying. And what I'm thinking of doing with the inventory is having this pallet rack back to back with the inventory rack. So we'll have the inventory rack here, this pallet rack will be here. And I think for the more popular ones, I'll keep like the lower section here, like I have here for the style six and walnut, kind of open like this, so I can still use the pallet system for the ones that I have a lot more inventory of, and then I'll have less inventory ones on the shelving behind it. So anyway, for that flow, uh, picking will come through here. We'll go to the bundling tables. This is the prep table for boxing. These tables would be kind of back to back in this space. So we'll have bundling table, prep table, this will be the boxing station, and I'll take that desk there, which is my hardware station. That's uh, screws and corner blocks, and I'll put that on the back side of the uh, of this of the packing thing. <laughs> I did that as version two at the warehouse, and having those two things back to back worked out really well because I can use the back side of this desk thing as staging areas on top of the uh, the boxing area. And uh, it works out really nicely. And having dedicated space, again, just for those dedicated subtasks works out really nicely. And then lastly, boxes will be up against this wall. So the biggest problem I had in version one of my packing area was things were all mushed together. So this is a two-flow kind of system. Product comes in here to the boxing area. Boxing and packing comes in this way to the boxing area. So nothing gets in, in the way of the, uh, of the flow. That'll at least get me to the point where if I get those shelves set up, I can get the random small pallets of chair kits off of pallets on the floor and onto those shelves. So like back here is style four and cherry. I can essentially get rid of that pallet and free up some more space. So I'm doing as much freeing up space today as I can before tomorrow when I pick up the, uh, the rest of the racking. Okay, so the most common question from the last video had to do with the building cost and how long would it take to kind of pay for itself or some variation of that question. So I thought I would step through that a little bit as a comparison of what I was paying in rent. This is obviously going to vary quite a bit depending on you know, your scenario or whatever. I'm always trying to offer some insight to folks that are maybe going through the same situation, give them more things to think about and maybe either change your mind or cement their decision even further. Regardless, just fun discussion. So let's kind of just walk through some numbers here. So the warehouse space was $1,697 a month. That comes out to just over $20,000 a year. It was 2,400 square feet. So the yearly per square foot cost was about $8.50. And for comparison purposes, I'm just gonna say that both these are the same size. Uh, functionally speaking, the warehouse space was almost exactly the same size as this barn. So I'm not going to adjust any figures per square foot for these comparisons going forward. They're pretty well comparable. So just factoring that in, that would make my payback uh, eight years and four months. 
which this comparison is obviously kind of flawed too because there's no scenario here where I could keep paying this and have that space for that long since my lease wasn't being renewed, but it's part of that fun uh, thought experiment. But hold on, <laughs> that's not an accurate comparison because now I have additional expenses. So that 1697 covered everything. Now I have ongoing expenses for this building. I have to pay for electricity, heat, uh, taxes, whatever that ends up being, and insurance on the building too. So just for fun round numbers sake, let's say I have $400 a month in expenses for this building. So my air quotes savings is now $1,297 or about $15,000 a year. So that brings my more realistic payback to 10 years and 11 months. Now maybe that comparison isn't great either because that was a shared space and not a dedicated building, let's say. So if I was to get more of a dedicated space, let's say at $12 a square foot, that would be uh, $28,800 a year. And with the allocation for expenses for this building, that would be a seven year payback at $16 a square foot, that would take it to a five year payback. So it just really depends on what comparables you use for this comparison. <laughs> That's some snow falling off the roof. Now there are some uh, intangible expenses that I have here as well that I didn't have to really worry about with, uh, with renting and that is all the facility stuff. So when I was renting, I didn't have to worry about like, you know, is the parking lot plowed? Cause that was just taken care of. I mean, I paid for it, it's, in the, it's built into the rent obviously, but I didn't have to worry about it, it was always done. If a spring on the overhead door broke, I didn't have to worry about that either. It would just get fixed. And for all I know, it happened while I was gone. And by the time I got back, it was working again. So it's just like you, you have the one less thing to worry about situation with, the, uh, with renting. <laughs> the, uh, the propane tank is gonna be better. As far as my thinking goes with this building, I'm not super worried about the payback period on it because of one key sort of intangible feature with this, and that is that the building is located here on the property. So I have a much higher utilization rate than I did with my warehouse space. So looking back over the last, uh, the last year of my lease, that would have been uh, summer of 21 through summer of 22, I averaged two trips per month. So that is 100 and 40 miles of driving in that month, which isn't a whole lot. I don't think the expense of going there is that great. That would really factor into a whole lot. But because it was a distance away, I didn't go there as often, so I wasn't actually utilizing the space as efficiently as I could. For me, that's the biggest intangible benefit for me. So I have that added flexibility to be able to work kind of when I want in little bits. I found over the years that that's just the way that I happen to work the best is for whatever reason, bouncing around through different things is how I stay mentally able to do things at somewhat of a, of a productive level. So most of the stuff that I would be doing in the barn type space is a few minutes or maybe an hour at a time kind of bouncing in here, doing something real quick and then heading back into the house to do some other work. So being able to work when I want it as I need, I think it's gonna be far more valuable to me. And to conclude things, just a quick sort of pro of renting is that it does give you some flexibility. So if you are you know, early in the business, starting a business, you haven't really proven the concepts yet, having a rental space can be somewhat beneficial versus maybe buying a space. Because especially early on, if you're starting that business, you might need that capital to actually start and grow your business rather than start a real estate business, which is what you've been doing if you're purchasing a building. And if the idea doesn't work out, it's probably gonna be easier to walk away and on the other side, if your business takes off rapidly and you quickly need to move to another space, you might have more flexibility to do so. So with my experience with that warehouse space is it really gave me the opportunity to further test and develop my various ideas for products, figure out what was gonna work or what wasn't gonna work and kind of go from there. And that's really what that space did for me is it allowed me to develop those ideas, test those ideas and really fine tune and hone and figure out all of the ins and outs of the different product lines. 
what works and what doesn't, and get me to the point now where I'm ready to start taking even bigger steps. So that's my quick insight on the payback of the building. And one last little thing I'll mention too, is that I didn't quite understand how important having this additional space here would be for me. Just the few months I've had the space, just having a spot that actually has room to put things and move things around and sort and organize, I needed the space here regardless. So I think this is gonna work out really nicely. Having the open sides allows me to pull seats out this way. I'm also considering maybe putting the seats on like its own little cart thing and leaving them parked underneath one of the packing tables to make that a little bit easier. But uh, we shall see. Another thing I can do here is if uh, when the skews expand, I can run my shelves this way and have two and have like a double row picking station kind of thing. But this is, this is cool. I'm oddly excited about this. I do have one more shelf to put in. I'll do that once I figure out what's gonna go here so I know whereabouts that's going to be. One advantage of having the shelves coming out this way is you get access to both of the long sides. This allows for three side uh, picking. So would that, but that would just block one of the end pieces. That's kind of the hardest part about laying this stuff out is this is a little more surface area than a pallet, but it's hard to get everything in here because you're trying to nest it all so that it is mainly accessible from the, the long face. So we'll try this for a bit and see kind of where that uh, ends up taking us. So I can start moving the inventory out of the house, but uh, before I do that, there is kind of a situation that has to get taken care of. It's, uh, it's raining now. <laughs> and it's already like one o'clock, so I'm gonna take care of the snow real quick, and uh, then I can actually move <laughs> the inventory out of the uh, out of the basement. So I know some of you have been asking to see the snowblower. So um, that's what I will show you next is the snowblower doing its thing. For those of you who care about that. Okay, so for those of you interested in what we're dealing with here, uh, ah, we got, uh, what is it, like eight? Pretty close to eight inches. It is 34 degrees out right now, so this is like the super wet heavy stuff. So definitely not as fast going as when it's super cold and dusty, but all the way down to the road now. Another common question from last time, and I guess ongoing, is uh, the bathroom. Hey Matt, did you know that there's no bathroom in your barn? Yes, yes I noticed that. <laughs> so the bathroom is one of those things that is on the list of things that can be added at pretty much any time. We talked about this as we were going through the build, and I could have had the plumbing installed into the floor for a bathroom, but that does limit me to putting that bathroom exactly where I think it should be today, having never used the space at all. So we opted to omit the plumbing completely in favor of uh, doing something in the future and putting the bathroom anywhere. The only downside to that is that the bathroom floor cannot be directly on. The concrete floor would have to be up on a deck a little bit, but I don't think having a step up into a bathroom 
is a big deal. I can put that thing literally anywhere. And if you want to take it to the next level, there's no reason why you couldn't put it up in a mezzanine or up on some stilts and put it up in the ceiling if you wanted to. So future flexibility is kind of one side of things and the side of putting it off into the future because the actual bathroom itself, like a toilet and a sink, not particularly expensive or that big of an endeavor to take care of, but it's what goes in and goes out of those bathroom fixtures that actually uh, gets a little more complicated. So out here, I would have to get back to our septic system or have a separate septic system installed for the barn. Uh, I don't know which one is <laughs> more practical, connecting about 400 feet back to the house with septic and water, or just connecting 400 feet back to the house and getting water and then putting a separate septic. I don't know. It's, it's for a future, future deal, future tearing up the yard kind of thing. It's not something that I would have had time for anyway uh, before the winter hit. The, the trench for that would be much more serious than a dinky little uh, temporary power trench that I put in. Our frost line here is 42 inches. The water line has to be well beneath that unless it's insulated or something. So it's, it's a big trench <laughs> just to get those services out here. So anyway, just kind of a feature item and it's not, for me, not that big of a deal to just walk to the house if I need to. It's about the same distance as if I had to walk to the bathroom uh, when I was at the warehouse, so I'm not too worried about that. And uh, there's plenty of places that you can stop to go to the bathroom between here and the house. Let's just say that. <laughs> I'm not really that concerned with it because I spent, what, two months out here building this building with no bathroom and it wasn't an issue for me. The only point where it would start to be a, a real concern, a real priority for me, would be if I had an employee here, just to have them have their own personal space for that. But otherwise, uh, a bathroom is not a huge priority for me. Another common question or concern throughout the build has been the windows on the, uh, the west wall. So those windows don't really serve the purpose of letting light in, or at least that's not my intended primary uh, consideration for those. Those windows are there as an exterior aesthetic. So from the house, that's the wall you can see of the barn. I think that makes it look a little more nice to look at, and I think it'll look even better once there is a, um, a lean-to out there, the windows and that lean-to will have more of a country porch type feel. So I think that's just gonna make it more aesthetically pleasing to look at as we're you know, sitting in the house looking at this barn. The secondary consideration of just having the light and having a view is also really nice, but I'm not really opposed to putting stuff in front of the windows either. This is still a primarily functional space. So if I have to put things in front of the windows to make stuff work, I will, but at least at this point, it feels like the layout's gonna work out that I don't need to do that. The sort of disadvantage of having windows in a wall, of course, is that you lose that wall space. So for me, that would be for storage racks or hanging things on the wall or what have you. At the warehouse, I didn't have any windows, which I guess I didn't really think about, but that was the case of that space. And the arrangement of the windows actually changed throughout the build or from the initial like get-go of the build until later on. Originally it was just gonna be a door and two windows, but then I decided to put a window in every single bay, and I think that worked out pretty nicely. I think it has a much better aesthetic appeal than just having windows and a door on one end and having nothing else. So I'm, I'm happy with the, uh, the look, at least, from the, uh, from the outside.
Okay, so that's a snowblower. Hopefully you enjoyed seeing that work and <laughs> some of you might be uh, happier now, having seen it. I'm gonna get back to work. So let me show you the current chair kit packing setup. So that is the outgoing shipments for this week. And uh, this is kind of where I do all my boxing. It's super inefficient because all my inventory is stored back in here. This is the new office. So this is where all the inventory kind of lives or has been living. It's moving out here pretty soon. Kind of fortunately though, uh, I think I had like 200 and something chairs in here originally and I am down to maybe 60 or something. So it's kind of nice that, you know, things have trickled out. So I don't have as much stuff to move across the yard. <laughs> but, uh, you know, all the all the boxes and things are stored back in here. So there's a lot of walking back and forth between the office and the shop, you know, as I'm, as I'm boxing. So that's what I'm gonna do next is start moving the stuff out of here because uh, Lindsay actually wants to move into the, the new office. <laughs> And I want my shop back. <laughs> I'm tired of all the stuff everywhere. So I think this is gonna work out really nicely. We have all the least popular SKUs, most least popular or most popular of the least popular descending and then up again here. So this is the least common bin area and then that's the most common. I think it's gonna work out pretty well. I have room for another shelf up here so I can add another one if I want to. I could probably put some packing materials and things up there. But uh, that's about it for that for now. Let's, uh, let's get onto some racking. So the first rack I wanna put above the talent handler. So the butt of the talent handler is underneath the first shelf of this rack. So the first shelf will be about eight feet off the floor. And these racks are 16 tall. So we'll have basically an eight foot tall shelving unit suspended eight feet off the floor somewhere in that kind of area. So <laughs> let's see how interesting it is standing up these 16 footers because standing up those 12 footers was uh, interesting enough in itself.
All right, that rack is up. Are you ready for my uh, my oversight? <laughs> I uh, I forgot that the uh, the last bay, the outside bays, are narrower than any of the midspan bays because this one goes to the outside of the building, so it is shorter by basically the thickness of the wall. So that means I can't get my mast up past this truss to load these two racks or these two shelves there. Um, so I could go to a three foot deep rack that, uh, that might work, but I think, um, I'm not really going to worry about it. I, I have an idea for getting the one thing up there that I want to put up there and then we'll throw the, uh, dust collection fittings down there. So I'm going to start loading this up so we can start, uh, cleaning up a little bit. It's, uh, it's one of those nights. So that's, uh, that's not going to work either. Not quite enough mast height. <laughs> like maybe a foot too uh, too short. So uh, what I can do, and I think what I'll probably end up doing is I'll get up there and I'll chop the uprights down. Since these ones are all bolted together, I can move that. Uh, I can move this horizontal piece down to like where the diagonal piece is and make that rack a little shorter not going to do that now i don't really have any desire to do that but um in my frustration i had a great idea uh for this shelf here where i can't get my forks into i can just instead of putting all these fittings onto pallets i can just stack them directly onto the racks and do it that way because it's not like i'm going to take these things down unless i need that fitting for something and if I need that fitting for something, the big ones like this, something crazier has happened. <laughs> so I think it's gonna work out okay. And then we'll, I'll, just, I'll deal with that top shelf later. That, that's where I wanted to put that, all of the pipes, the straight pipes, just kind of end pick that and set it on a top shelf. So I don't know, that's what I'm gonna do with all of this to get these fittings out of here. And then I can, I'll do this. I'll deal with this situation here with the other rack. Why leave for tomorrow where you can accomplish today? Something that I never live by. So almost all of the duct work is up in there. I have this little shelf here. I can put some smaller stuff and a few of the smaller fittings and things, but that gets that stuff way the heck up out of the way. Never have to, uh, never have to touch that again. <laughs> until we get a much bigger dust collector or have a need for a much bigger dust collector. Telehandler just nestles in here nicely. I got some storage area here underneath the butt of a telehandler for some pallets. So that can be pallet storage back in there, but it's kind of cool. It's actually worked. Like this is what I had in my head, a pallet rack above a telehandler. <laughs> so I'm gonna end this video here. I kind of was hoping and was kind of thinking that I'd get quite a bit further than, uh, than I did so far, but uh, you know what? At least some progress is progress in the right direction, I guess. So at least with uh, all that duct work out of here, I have all this space back again. I have a few things back here to put away and then the rest of the, uh, the chair kit area to finalize, but it's... It's getting there. I mean, it's got a long way to go still, but it has come a heck of a long way since, uh, since I crammed everything in here after moving. So that's going to do it for this one. If I get uh, some more questions, maybe I'll do another thing like this if it, uh, if it works out. So thank you, as always, for watching. I greatly appreciate it. If you have any questions or comments on the barn or the shop or whatever, please feel free to leave me a comment. As always, I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. And until next time, <laughs> happy woodworking. I'll be putting stuff away. Not woodworking still.